mold is finished. So now if you've seen any of my other carbon fiber videos, what I have to do is cover this in a mold release wax, then PVA release, and then we can start applying carbon fiber. Nice clean finish. After we've got that applied, we're gonna be using a peel ply, we've got our breather ply, and I'm just gonna be using a garbage bag as our bagging material. The resin I'm using is a two-part epoxy resin from Composite Envisions. If you want a little bit more detail about what everything does, I've got another video that I'm gonna link up here somewhere on when I did this on my 350Z. We're going to be using a carbon fiber tube and carbon all right so everything's ready to go it is a great idea to go ahead and cut some strips out beforehand that you know you're going to need because once the resin's poured and everything's mixed you are on a time crunch you can stop and cut some pieces if you need to but it makes it a lot easier if you plan ahead think through what's going to go where i've already got this first piece applied so it's exactly how i want it and then I can just start working from there, be a little bit more relaxed, and make less mistakes. We'll just work our way down the bench until we get to our vacuum bagging material. So let's see how this goes. So here's the product of the vacuum bagging process. We have a few wrinkles we'll have to sand out before giving it one more coat of epoxy just to give it that shine that's normally associated with carbon fiber parts. Gonna have to cut each end and basically just destroy our mold inside there. That's really the only way I know how to do this. So we're gonna have to destroy that, but it should pop out pretty easy once I get the center section out. All that mold release wax and the PVA will make all those parts pop right off the carbon fiber. So here it is, with all of this crap out of the way, it's amazing how light this is. I mean, your brain just looks at something this size, says it should weigh one thing, and then it doesn't weigh anything. It's really it's a weird feeling. So all we have to do now is get our length right. I think I got to cut a little bit off of here, and off of here as well, but we'll fine tune those in on the engine. I'll then have my two band clamps here with a silicone coupler, silicone coupler, two band clamps, and then I have to add two little barbs back here for those two vacuum lines, recoat it, and it'll be done. After checking on my car, I need to take about an inch off of this end, which is the MAF airflow sensor end, and this is the throttle body end. I need to take a lot less off, but at an angle, so I'm taking off less on this side than I am on this side. This time we're gonna use the cutoff wheel. I can get a little bit more precise. It's easier, I can hold it with one hand. We'll cut this down, and then what we're gonna do is go over this with resin one more time to make it shiny. I just test fit the intake on the car and it fits perfectly, zero issues. I was able to figure out where I wanna put my fittings. I've got two different fittings I've got to install. Both are 1 8 NPT fittings. So I'm gonna be using an 11 30 seconds drill bit. Selected my two spots on the underside two areas where I had drips. So I've got a little extra resin there. It'll make it a lot stronger of a mount than if I did it on the side. I also will hide the fittings underneath the intake. So it's a win-win. I've also got my 1 8 NPT tap just in case. I'm gonna try to see if I can get a little bit of thread going on here. So I can thread those in and then epoxy them in. The idea is to have an interference fit between the intake and the fitting. So if that works, great. If not, We'll just kind of play it by ear. I'm also going to be reusing the nice BMW clamps that came off the regular intake. I ordered two more of these from Turner Motorsports, so it should be here tomorrow. And then we've got our silicon hose that'll replace the hard line that goes off this 3 8 inch barb.
after a bit of work. Got both fittings screwed in. The threading worked actually really well. I cut this barb down a little bit shorter. I just don't need it to be as long and that allows me to place them closer together. And I can still twist this one in. You can see I also cut down the threaded end of the barb just to have minimal intrusion into the airflow. So you can see just how little intrusion there is. If you compare it to the stock piece, they've got a pretty deep indention around each one of them, which is gonna disturb the airflow a little bit. So I'm not really losing any efficiency here to the stock piece. So now what I'm gonna do, even though these are really tightly on there, they're not going anywhere. I'm still gonna epoxy around them just to make sure everything is nice and tight. I don't have any air leaks and it's gonna just keep them in place a little bit better. Let that sit overnight and it'll be ready to install in the car. And that is our finished product. We've got both barbs epoxied in and I have them painted black. They'll be in the underside of the elbow so it doesn't really matter, but just to make them a little bit stealthier. Let's see how it fits on the car. It's time to remove our stock intake for the last time. We'll be using these BMW band clamps. It's time to remove our stock intake for the last time. We'll be using these BMW band clamps. And then we have two more of them we got from Turner Motorsports. Just to make everything look nice and clean. Gonna remove this extra gasket that goes around the throttle body we won't need that anymore the silicone will be the gasket so we'll go ahead and flip this on and then put on our band clamp next we'll put our two hose barbs on We'll apply our silicone coupler to our map housing. Now I'm going to leave the two band clamps that go around the actual carbon fiber loose until we get our airbox installed. Alright, so now the airbox is in place, which is, gives a location for the mask. And then we have our throttle body in place. So now we can just adjust this within the couplers. And then we tighten down our band clamps. Now that's all that's left to do is take it on a test drive, make sure everything works, and we're done. Well, that test drive went amazing. I am super happy with how this turned out. I'm not sure how much extra power we actually got out of it, if any but it looks better, the theory behind it is sound, and you do get a little bit more intake noise, which is nice. So thanks for following along. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments below. Next time, we're gonna address getting a new panel filter and getting rid of the little intake trumpet that's down here behind the front bumper that necks down and is gonna rob some power. And after we finish up all our intake work, we'll throw a tune on it and put it on the dyno. So hit that subscribe button, and I will see you guys next week.